is Paulina Stabanovic, and she is a UX researcher and interaction designer, and she is a co-owner of a, a company called Dolls and Pirates. Thank you. So, uh, hello everyone. I'm very glad to be here today. Um, and uh, I will um, I'll talk about uh, interactive storytelling. Um, it will be a little bit theoretical, but uh, don't worry because uh, all things that I'm going to tell you are from my experience, and um, I think it can be very useful. Uh, so let's start. Um, just a brief presentation. I'm a UK user experience researcher, but uh, I'm also an um, interactive uh, visual designer and director. Um, I followed like two paths uh, that uh, eventually um, <laughs> I managed to combine into one. And um, I think that uh, today I'm very. Um, um, I will be able to show you some interesting things about storytelling. Um, so, uh, let's start. Um, okay, uh, we'll, um, we'll dive into some definitions, uh, but um, um, I will show you first my projects. Uh, here are some of the uh, installations, interactive installations that they made uh, in the past year. So um, some of these technologies now may s seem a little bit obsolete as uh, they were done in 2012 and you know how things change very fast. Uh, I've used a lot of open source softwares as uh, notebooks because I had a huge amount of data that I had to parse and I had to stream uh, in real time. Um, I use processing uh, and I combine everything with Arduino boards. And um, uh, this installation was uh, in real time and it was about um, um, Expo in Milan. And it was a, a huge convention about uh, uh, food and uh, world feeding. Um, another installation that I made was uh, with uh, Twitter. And uh, <coughs> I had to hack like a, a Twitter API because uh, at the time, uh, just uh, in the weeks that I have to do these projects, um, things uh, in uh, the web changed and the uh, real-time feed uh, was like banned by Google, not banned, but uh, totally was taken off. And uh, Twitter also um, uh, didn't give you uh, any more the possibility to put the app, uh, um, <coughs> the app uh, in your uh, um, in your own uh, own uh, like developers' uh, uh, work and installations. Uh, so I had to uh, like code and pass through. Uh, uh, like five steps uh, in, uh, instead of, of one. But it was a really interesting experience and I permitted people to uh, show their uh, tweets real time, uh, projecting them uh, on the wall uh, that were, uh, in front, it was in front of them. And uh, here is maybe one of my favorite projects. Um, I, as I told you, I'm an um, interactive director and um, I'm like uh, trying to understand how interactive storytelling can be applied also on the web. Because I had some uh, experience with physical interaction, uh, but it's a really um, completely different task. And uh, because web experiences are way more uh, uh, private, are way more, more personal. Uh, and um, I'll hope to continue also uh, this um, research uh, also in virtual reality maybe because uh, storytelling is going kind of in that way. Uh, here I hacked uh, like a toy gun. Uh, I was like walking on the market and I saw this toy gun that reminded me of the ones I had when I was little. And I really liked it so I decided to do this project, this like a space 60s futuristic project. Um, that is, uh, was a kind of uh, installation Mm, but also um, a game. Uh, in fact, there was uh, exposed in Milan during Design Week. A lot of children uh, played, and they were like the best users, players, because children are not ever like afraid of anything. So they <laughs> almost broke, the, broke it, but uh, they really uh, managed to experience the movie because shooting, you could change the scenes in the movie. 
and um, uh, I used like a very simple Bluetooth because I tried to avoid uh, using boards, electronic boards, and um, to use uh, um, programming too much. Uh, so actually, um, I here managed to do like simple things with uh, um, Kinect, uh, Arduino, and uh, I first used processing and then I passed to pure data because it, it was a uh, a, a very good uh, also, um, it was a, a, a very much simpler with the code. And um, okay, uh, let's start now uh, to, um, to enter a little bit into the theory. Uh, so why stories are important? Um, fundamentally, we all know that stories are like our cultural baggage from the, from the dawn of man and uh, we have the first paintings in the caves, uh, and uh, we have the tales that were told around campfires. Um, storytelling managed to engage people on an emotional level, uh, to engage their minds, and to, we, we actually bond to stories. We like to tell them back, and uh, we, we get passionate about stories. Um, they have been very important. Uh, in past since they transmitted our traditions, but they are still important today because they can be applied on uh, our, um, our new also digital artifacts. So I believe that uh, all of you like uh, do things, create things. Um, so you in a way also change things because you innovate, you hack, and um, you impact on societies because every change um, change our way of socializing, uh, change our social practices, and also our culture. Uh, so every hack, in a way, is important because um, it will eventually influence the way we communicate with each other and uh, we relate with the things that we do. Um, storytelling uh, can be applied today uh, on the devices we produce and also on the devices that are, are only like <laughs> task oriented. Um, if we think about applications, websites, electronic boards, um, they're only, they're like uh, devices and stuff that is, um, that has not a, um, like um, meaning, values, it doesn't bring stories, but we can put a little bit of stories inside these things, and we can in this way have the benefits of storytelling and uh, engage our audience and uh, the, our users, actually, because if we have applications and devices, we have users, and we can make our uses, users um, engage more emotionally with the, with the things that we do create or hack. And in that way, we can add meaning and value to the things that we produce. So this can be done also in, in ways that are not uh, too much obvious, uh, not, uh, um, that can be also like uh, a concept or a frame to a system, a style, uh, to the things that we are going to design. Because um, uh, storytelling can, can have many faces, and it's not uh, only the, um, the story with the protagonist, but can also bring values. It can be important for brands. It can uh, just make roles, scenarios, and uh, we like eventually in engage with these roles and with these scenarios. Uh, we, we meet them, uh, we get to know them personally, and so we bond with them personally. And maybe today in a, <coughs> in a society that is so full of things, it's interesting to bond with things a little bit more. Um, because also we have the opportunity is just, just to think a little bit more about it when you are doing, creating something uh, from the start. Uh, so uh, interactive storytelling can be, um, it's, it's really a vast, uh, um, a vast field um, from interactive installations to web uh, 
uh, to web platforms, we can find it almost everywhere and we can apply it almost everywhere, fundamentally. Um, so um, I'll, I'd like to enter a little bit the, the core of the topic and to um, explain you a little bit uh, something about interactive systems and uh, why can we talk about systems and um, the structure of interactive storytelling. Um, where now, when we talk about interactive story, digital storytelling, um, it seems a very new, interesting thing. But uh, the first oral tradition uh, was quite interactive because uh, people talking could like uh, change tone, could change directions of, uh, of their talk, uh, could uh, also skip some parts according to the audience, to the feedback from the public or uh, from, the, from, from the people they had in front. Uh, with the mass media communication, everything changed a lot and uh, things get uh, really linear and really passive. Audience became really passive, uh, so um, we can think about cinema, we can think about uh, television and, um, and also print. It's, it's completely, uh, only maybe just few exceptions with some text games and books. It's, it was completely a passive audience. Mm, but uh, now we have regained this like um, communicational and oral tradition interaction that uh, can be very interesting to just explore a little bit. Um, first I want to do a remark because um, it may be useful also to, um, I don't know, maybe you do <coughs> devices or uh, you hack softwares, but um, it's interesting to just um, think about that um, not every device, not every software is completely interactive. Uh, most of the things that we have in front every day are responsive. Uh, so things that are merely responsive uh, react to human actions promptly. But um, they, are, um, they do not uh, stream. Uh, they do not have a flow of information that goes uh, forward and back uh, in loops. Um, so uh, interactive, uh, interactive device is something that the user can control and can uh, and have an impact on that. So the outcome of the interactive device is something that is completely manipulated by, um, by the user. Uh, well, uh, when you have a responsive device, um, let's think about uh, audio player, video player, um, uh, or a television, we can manipulate the instrument. So we can stop it, we can play it, pause it. Um, but the final outcome is something that uh, it's not uh, controlled or generated by the users. Uh, so this is very important and uh, most of the devices and the software we use every day are uh, mostly responsive and some of them can be both interactive and responsive. Uh, so let's have this in mind also. Um, first of all, um, uh, I'm going to show you some, um, explain you some very important aspects of, the, of these interactive systems uh, because we all know these systems and are every day in front of them. We use them, we create them. Uh, but um, uh, maybe with some definition, we can just dive into them a little bit more and understand them better and also our creative possibilities. Um, performativity uh, is told by, Le uh, by Egal and Levin, like uh, one of the most important aesthetic quality of digital systems. Um, and digital systems use participative human action uh, to, as an input to create audiovisual experiences. So it's like basics. Um, this performativity uh, can be um, found more, more practically uh, in the fact that uh, um, the agency in these digital systems, so the capacity to act and to, to have meaningful actions, um, is transferred from the creator of the system 
to, to the audience and also um, nowadays uh, to the system itself because systems are generative, are algorithmic, are, uh, have computational algorithms that make them act and uh, um, without the need also of human interaction. So um, the systems I'm talking about have this software side that doesn't need uh, human interaction. Um, it has a creator and an audience. And with time, we had creator or authors, storytellers, okay, and uh, the audience. Now we have also this software uh, that are um, completely artificial intelligence and that um, in a way um, now have gained creative power and creative, um, creative importance. Um, here there is maybe um, a scheme that can illustrate a little bit how things are and, uh, along with the audience, author and programmer because the author has to team up with a coder, with a programmer if he, want, he, he wants to do something interactive. Um, there is this software, this generative interface and then we have also our interactive experience. Uh, softwares and the generative interfaces are really important because they have a peculiar features. Um, everything in the world has its own dynamics. Uh, it's all, it has its own natural or physical dynamics and, um, and causes. Um, systems uh, like these uh, are based on softwares that have completely conventional uh, human rules. So every time we are in front of a system, we are actually in front of something unique, of something that it's not, um, that doesn't follow any natural or physical rule, but is something that is completely conventional and created by the author of the system. So every time we face a new software or a new interface, we face something that is completely new for us and we have to get used to, and maybe now we have get used to a lot of softwares and interfaces, mm, but it doesn't mean that every time there is um, this intrinsic peculiarity and that is something that is not completely um, felt by uh, the user, uh, and in this way, uh, the systems has changed the approach of the users, making them a little bit like explorators, because every user has to explore in order to learn, in order to uh, learn how to, to, to do things, to manage, to manipulate the software and, and all its affordances. Um, also, here there is uh, another thing that may be useful, but this one, it's not, uh, um, it's not always like that. Um, I mean, uh, uh, the surface of the system, very often, the interface, is both the product and the medium. Uh, we had this also in, I don't know, in, in art, uh, in classical art, uh, sculpting, okay? But uh, here there is this thing that every time the conventions and the rules of the softwares, as I said before, are something new. So the user have to, has to explore them. So this is one of the um, most innovative and um, peculiar characteristics of the interactive digital systems. Um, with, um, along with all these changes, also our roles have changed, okay. So what we do is not what we did 12, 50 years ago, okay. And um, we have to face these changes and have to learn new things in order to manage to do things like we like them to be or maybe just to create completely new things that in the history uh, were never created because now we have new possibilities. Uh, well, um, the authors now are not creators of the artwork. So um, the authors are not the, um, if I'm a writer, okay, um, I do not write only a 
a book that is a closed artwork. I read a completely open artwork or a partially open artwork, okay? A completely, um, a story that in a way half is mine but half is uh, owned by the system, the software and half by the audience. Uh, so um, the writers and the, and the authors are creators of mostly of experiences um, creators of processes and um, they have to think about the modalities of manipulation uh, because their, um, their, their audience and their users uh, will not only read passively but they will have to act and they will have to participate and to co-create. Uh, so um, now, you, if you want to create an interactive content, you must be aware that you're not creating only a content, but also a process, and you are giving your readers or your users um, this process to, to manipulate in order to get audiovisual experiences or uh, the story that you want to transmit. Uh, so you are the author of a process beside the content. Um, and also in this way, the audience is not any more passive, but is way more active. Uh, and um, here uh, there is also um, a distinction that I will make uh, now by, um, by the end of the talk. Um, because uh, the audience now has um, this performative uh, are every one of us has become also a performance. So um, I'm a performer as you are every time that uh, we get in touch with an interactive system. Uh, so we have to uh, be willing to participate, to obtain something. Uh, we must be willing to um, achieve some point and to uh, follow the rules that the creator gave us. Um, so here it's very interesting also because, because here I'm on Hackaday and uh, we, uh, most of the projects here and most of the things here are about also breaking some rules or um, making things a little bit different than it was supposed uh, to be. So um, the audience here uh, probably is a little more like a step more active than the other one. So not we have probably like a class passive audience, uh, normal audience, and maybe okay if like if you like to innovate and to hack things, you're like uh, a, a step also on. And um, uh, this creative agency is something that it's uh, really. Um, really interesting, uh, but um, it, can, um, it can also be very um, unuseful if you want to tell stories. Because if I'm an author and I want to transmit a message and I want to say something to you, I don't want you to uh, change my message completely because I want that message to be sent to you, okay? And um, this is... Uh, uh, why I want, I want to make a small difference that can help you all uh, when you have to um, like do some interactive storytelling. Uh, because um, during my long experience and uh, in the theoretically really the, there is um, a very divided um, a mass of uh, terrorists that it's completely have different approaches. And, uh, and uh, they use the same language. For example, interactive storytelling is something that embraces story creation and storytelling. When I create a story, I create a story from the beginning to the end, okay? And when I, when I do storytelling, I tell a story. And so actually, interactive storytelling uh, can be something that can be applied to different um, uh, embraces things more than should because embraces also story creation. Okay, and um, but this thing, this distinction can be useful because um, when you have practically to do some to create a story, you can think if you want, if um, if you want like to be a 
curator of uh, your story and just to um, allow people, I don't know, to have a concept or to have a title, but to allow other people to make emergent stories from nothing um, and so participative uh, uh, stories that are not um, top down but bottom up and that are created by the participants. So no one knows how they will end until they end. Um, there are also stories that are branching narrative. So I can choose watching a movie whether I want to watch one protagonist or the other or I want uh, the story to go in one direction or in the other. Um, it also, um, there are many like uh, storytelling systems um, in video games, especially that are um, that are based on algorithms and uh, on modules, uh, based on characters or or on players modalities of um, of interaction. Um, so the drama management is something that it's really important in the story creation uh, because uh, it's really a non-linear story so you you will never be the author completely if you have an emerging narrative a branching story okay if you like to choose three different uh, endings because you aren't sure because you would like uh, all of them it's okay it will be your story completely but um most of the time, authors prefer a linear, more linear storytelling uh, that is something that is not too much studied nowadays because um, it seems that only the game industry is uh, like uh, doing um, research and uh, have like necessities and things that giving the audience all the power to create everything is the only things to go, uh, is the only things to um, uh, to um, the only way to create engagement and pleasure and it's really not like that because uh, there are um, um, every day more and more uh, storytelling with uh, a single author that uh, uh, like uh, has an intent has a path that he follows and uh, just makes people explore his story so uh, in a way um, the audience is completely explorative. Um, co uh, it's like co-creates to the story, yes, but uh, doesn't affect like uh, the crucial drama and the crucial moments of the drama. Uh, so in this way, you can tell a story, you can send a message. Uh, it's very useful for um, for you, also for advertisers, it's your very uh, useful, like uh, pedagogical tools, also with children, and uh, because they they can have fun, but they m can also learn. Because if you have to to teach them something about history, you cannot change. You can't have a branching narrative. Um, you have one only narrative. And, uh, but you can give the opportunity to explore it and to experience it in a, in a, with more perception when with a linear, a completely non-interactive storytelling. Uh, so it's something that uh, we have to be aware of, like a new instrument, a new possible instrument, and, um, and also um, an instrument that has changed our roles and the roles of, uh, of the people, the user, the audience uh, that we work for, that we create for. Um, so this, um, this should be all. And um, I don't know if you have some questions or, or something related to the topic. OK. Um, I was very glad to, to speak today and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you.